so hello friends welcome back to this next video and in this video i'm going to discuss with you a very important concept that we have been discussing in the series till now the new concept that we talk about here is the chinese front and how the chinese front has basically created a situation of hybrid war for india so as we have talked about in the previous video about the case of pakistan emerging as a front and we have understood that what were the implications on our strategic community about emergence of pakistan as a front keeping that knowledge in mind now let us build further with what implications does this have on the case of china so friends if you remember that in the previous video i explained you an important concept that when it came to pakistan pakistan was placed by the strategic community of india in the unpredictable category the reason why we placed pakistan in the unpredictable category is primarily because of the fact that pakistan was basically an idea that became into a territory later our strategic community was not having the clarity on how this state of pakistan which till now was basically an idea and now has become a territory is going to display behavior but friends if you remember then in the previous video i also explained one important point to you that when it came to a state like china the chinese were basically placed in the predictable category by the strategic community and china was placed in the predictable category by the strategic community because the chinese were perceived by the indian strategic community as a state that basically had a civilizational history we knew that because chinese have a history and because the chinese have a historical past it is in this backdrop we understood one thing that this state of china which has a historical past which has a predictable history till now is an important state which for that matter shall display predictable behavior however we were not sure about the fact that a state with which we perceived to have a predictable trajectory of behavior would end up in becoming a state displaying unpredictable behavior friends it is important to understand first thing that how did china emerge as a front for us after india became independent in 1947 at that time the chinese were witnessing an internal civil war the civil war in china came to an end in 1949 with the birth of people's republic of china as a state when people's republic of china was born at that time india thought that we will be able to establish a friendship with the chinese based on our common civilizational past this understanding that we both are civilizational players enabled the two of us to develop linkages so that we could explore a common ground of engagement with each other but friends the problem was here that we both not only wanted to create a common ground of a civilizational past but we both also had a peculiar problem the problem was that india and china had inherited frontier or a border from the british and that frontier or a border earlier was a natural border while the britishers did make attempts to resolve the boundary issue and while the britishers did try to take all possible attempts to basically find a common solution to the boundary problem the britishers somehow failed whether it was the johnson line in 1865 whether followed by that was the john ardog line in 1896 whether it was the mccartney macdonald line in the 1899 or whether it was the shimla convention in 1913 and the mcmahon line that subsequently was drawn but published later in the 1930s in none of the endeavors did the britishers ever succeeded in having a boundary based on consensus of the chinese either the chinese were altogether absent or the chinese never responded to the attempts of the british to create the boundary however the boundary is a separate topic of debate and i have explained that in my international relations book also in depth but the fact of the matter is that the britishers did try to solve the boundary never achieved consensus 
and we inherited a boundary from the British which was bound to create frictions in the future. While initially, after independence of India and formation of the People's Republic of China, the concern for both the countries was to develop an understanding that whether are we both going to accept a natural border or are we going to replace the natural border with a new boundary based on consensus. As the time progressed, as history progressed, both the countries in the 1950s at least achieved a consensus on the point that for the betterment of the future, a boundary which is well created, delineated and defined shall be better for both the nations. But the problem arose when both the countries sat down to exchange those maps, to exchange those historical records that they both possessed, on the basis of which they were likely to establish that consensus. When both the countries shared with each other those maps, on the basis of which they were likely to create that consensus, this is where the problem arose. The problem was that India perceived on its own, based on their own historical understanding, where the border could be. Whereas when we showed our maps to the Chinese, the Chinese on the other hand showed us their maps and they stated that according to their perception where the border could be. Despite numerous rounds of diplomatic negotiations, neither of the parties were able to establish consensus. Neither of the parties were able to develop an understanding as to where do the exact borders lie. And as both the countries failed to establish that consensus, a misunderstanding arose which manifested in the 1962 India-China conflict. When there was a violent clash in 1962 between India and China, and when this conflict happened, it came as a shock to India. It came as a shock to India because India always perceived China as a state that would display predictable behavior. We always thought that even though we have a different understanding with respect to the Chinese about the border, but we knew that the Chinese would display maturity, would display keenness to solve the border. We thought that Chinese would not resort to violence, would not become insecure, even though the diplomatic negotiations on evolving consensus over a map and a boundary were being done with. However, the bigger issue was that when the 1962 conflict happened, not only it came as a shock to India, but the strategic community of India at that time understood one thing. And they understood that a state like China which we perceived till now was a predictable state. If that state is going to display an unpredictable behavior, and as it has displayed this unpredictable behavior by resorting to a conflict with us, as it has displayed this unpredictable behavior by resorting to a violent clash with us, it came as a shock to India because India now realized that we do not know how this state is number one going to behave in the future. We did not know that this state which has displayed this unpredictable behavior here is going to do what in the future. Whether it is going to join hands with the other adversary that we had that is Pakistan or is it going to do something altogether different or will it not join hands with Pakistan. We had no idea about it. All these were wild guesses thoughts that were wildly going on in the minds of our strategic community members because they were perplexed, they were upset, they were not understanding the fact that how do we react to this and thereby an important learning that came to the strategic community was that we perceived China as a predictable state, it unfortunately displayed an unpredictable behavior. This came as a shock to us. But one thing now became clear, that as the history unfolded, as the time unfolded further, we got to know with more clarity what kind of behavior was China up to. 
because immediately after the 1962 conflict while we waited that some maturity may prevail over china while we waited that the chinese might accept that what happened was wrong but instead of all that it is in 1963 that the chinese went further they not only joined hands with pakistan but in the process of joining hands with pakistan the pakistani ceded a part of the territory the shakskam valley in the kashmir which was already a territory under dispute to the chinese when this territorial gift was given to the chinese by the pakistanis and when the chinese accepted the gift without any resistance and when the chinese accepted the gift without even pointing out once to pakistan that no pakistan we would not like this territory because this does not belong to us and also it's a disputed territory there were alarm bells which were ringing in our strategic community our strategic community now understood one thing they understood a very clear cut thing that china is not going to stop post 62 our strategic community understood one thing that the chinese will continue their unpredictable behavior and we understood that one way by which this unpredictable behavior shall unfold is that they are going to join hands with the chinese the pakistanis and as the chinese joined hands with the pakistanis india now understood one thing our strategic community understood one thing that china is going to emerge and shall remain a front for us and that is the reason why it is in 1962 and the events in 1963 that convinced our strategic community that india is not only vulnerable to pakistan as a threat alone but is also vulnerable to china as another threat as another front and thereby it is by the time of 1964 that our strategic community developed this understanding that while pakistan is one front of the threat the chinese are the second front and thereby since then our strategic community members the members of our indian intelligence agencies and the larger indian intelligence community for that matter began to take steps with the larger objective of understanding how do we tackle a two front war how do we tackle management of two front war india understood one thing that while at one place we may not have the requisite capabilities while at one place we may not have the requisite capabilities to aggressively tackle the two fronts on our own the strategic community also understood that even if we indigenously do not have such capabilities we have to go on the concept of borrowed power where the concept of borrowed power as envisaged by our strategic community was that we will engage with other countries engage with those countries that not only help us to build our indigenous base but but also engage with those countries which for that matter will provide us the assistance to develop a strong defense base in india which will gradually help us to develop capabilities to tackle the two front war but don't forget one thing that when you engage with a foreign country and you tell a foreign country that you got to help me out in developing capabilities to tackle the two front war do not forget one thing that that country is not going to come out of pure altruism and help you directly the first thing that that country will try to do is it will try to sell the products to you and as a country which is focusing on development of such capabilities our strategic community had the clarity that fine even if some countries force us compel us to buy their products first we shall indulge in this buying selling relationship but this buying and selling relationship in which we shall indulge with shall not be a buyer seller relationship forever 
we made it very clear to our foreign suppliers that while we are willing to buy the products from you for the time being but we would not like the buyer seller relationship to remain as it is forever that is the reason why when we explored the russians as an option post 62 when we explored the option of french post 62 or for that matter when we explored the option of americans israelis as defense supplier since the end of the cold war we made it very clear to all of them that while you may begin with buyer seller at the end of the day some time later this relationship has to transform from just being a buyer seller to undertaking of technology transfers and helping us to develop our own capabilities this is the reason why it is in this backdrop that when we undertake an analysis of our defense diplomacy with various countries which is not the domain of this video here but if you analyze that you will understand that while with most of the countries our engagement at the defense level began at the buyer seller level but even with a country like us today our relationship has got transformed for the purpose of what is called as technology transfers thereby one thing is very clear that even though we have tried our level best to develop our capabilities to tackle a two front war the problem arose because our adversaries did not stop there the chinese the pakistanis not only joined hands together but after joining hands together to create the two front war threat for us they went a little further and when they went a little further they began to explore to and a half fronts what do we mean by two and a half fronts the chinese with their economic might that they developed over a period of time and the pakistanis with their low level cheap contacts that they enjoy with various countries came together to explore those countries with which they could pin prick india one such instance is the case of nepal the recent aggression done by nepal over the map the sledge hammer tactics that they adopted the map machinations that they did with respect to the kalapani issue whether it was the lipu lake which marks the origin of the kali river or limpia dhura marks the origin of the kali river all that which nepal did under the great leadership of kp oli was nothing but a chinese backing off emergence of nepal as half front against us the chinese were instigating the nepalis to see how does india respond to this the chinese were also instigating not just the nepalis but for that matter even the people of myanmar while the chinese played their game of using nepal for sledge hammer tactics against india with respect to lipu lake issue or whether it was with respect to the limpia dura issue at the end of the day we had the last last laugh kp sharma oli not only lost his seat but he became so unpopular thanks to our intelligence community in action in nepal that sher bahadur duba who is the prime minister today enjoys a cordial relationship with us we don't need to go into those spy games at work which are behind the scenes but we did have the last laugh when it comes to myanmar the chinese along with the pakistanis are playing this dirty game of creating groups like haraka al yasin and akamul mujahideen using assets of lashkar e taiba like hafiz tawar or for that matter deputing brigadier ashwak and major salamat of the isi to create the rohingya trouble for us we know their games at the back we know what is the rohingya issue and we know how to tackle it but the fact of the matter is we don't need to go into the depth of those issues which are there because they are part of diplomacy they are part of international relations but the thing is that the chinese and the pakistanis are trying their level best number 1 to create these half fronts the objective is to use these half fronts to create trouble for us this is why we say that the future lies in the changing paradigm of war this is why we say that the future lies in what is known as the hybrid war what is hybrid war 
hybrid war is basically a situation where your adversary not only resorts to a direct military assault on you but uses arenas of war outside the orbit of the military dimension that means that chinese and the pakistanis today know one thing they don't want to mess up with india by directly waging a military assault on india but they know one thing that they can try to undertake subversion and sabotage in india and by doing that subversion and sabotage they can continue to weaken india that is the reason why it is important to understand one very crucial concept here that in hybrid war you are in a constant state of war in a hybrid war your adversaries like the chinese like the pakistanis are not stopping at one place they are creating disinformation campaigns they are economically trying to weaken you militarily trying to weaken you politically trying to weaken you by engineering protests by not only engineering protests but by manufacturing discontent in the society by manipulating the thought processes of our society the larger objective of these two states today is to weaken india and let's not forget one thing friends why is china displaying this behavior why is china so insecure about india is it that india really bothers china is it that india really irritates china to some extent yes india has a global power ambition chinese also have a global power ambition the chinese know one thing that the two of them cannot coexist with a similar ambition of achieving a rank 1 in the world hierarchy that is why with the economic might that the chinese enjoy with the rentier state that the chinese have created in pakistan the chinese and the pakistanis are today creating hybrid war threats for india under these hybrid war threats they are trying to basically weaken us internally they are trying to bleed us internally they are trying to economically hurt us they are trying to politically hurt us culturally hurt us militarily hurt us and don't forget what do these people achieve at the end of the day while pakistan will be happy to become a rentier state of china the chinese will be very happy to use pakistan and create hybrid war for india so that india remains bogged down to tackle these threats internally the idea of the chinese friends is very clear they want india to basically drain its resources in tackling unwanted threats because if india keeps draining these resources in tackling these unwanted threats india will not garner resources to become a superpower so don't forget the fact the objective of the hybrid war is very clear the objective of the hybrid war is to create a situation where our adversaries basically try to keep us bogged down into regional power play the objective of the hybrid war is to prevent india to create and materialize its global um, global power ambitions because the objective of the hybrid war is that india should continue to drain its resources and as the resources of india are constantly drained india will remain bogged down and these resources which are wasted will now not enable india to channelize these resources for proper growth this is the reason why hybrid war is a much more serious threat to us than a normal war because in a normal war you can garner channelize all your resources at one place and decimate your enemy but in a hybrid war your enemy is trying to decimate you at multiple levels that is why it's not wrong to also argue and state that hybrid war is quite similar to bleeding india by a thousand cuts because if you impose a thousand cuts on me i will have to apply a bandaid at each of the thousand cuts that will be more costly to me than you fighting me and breaking my bone for which i would just require one plaster to recover from the fracture so i hope you are able to understand friends 
that not only china has emerged as a front for us not only china has emerged as a threat to us but very importantly the chinese today along with the pakistanis who constitute our core adversaries today are unleashing a hybrid war upon us in a hybrid war the war is waged through multiple dimensions through multiple strategies one of the strategies is disinformation campaign one of the strategies is to create discontent in the society one of the strategies is to internally bleed the society by orchestrating riots by orchestrating protests by engineering protests or they can also resort to economic subversion military subversion political subversion bureaucratic subversion and cultural subversion and all these done with the end objective of sabotaging india now you understand one thing that the objective of the hybrid war is sabotage the means to orchestrate this hybrid war constitute the subversive elements in the previous video i had explained you that sabotage is the end goal subversion is the means hybrid war is the end goal subversion are the strategies adopted to achieve this objective of hybrid war this is the reason why friends very often in the media you will hear that our chief of defense staff makes this statement time and again that india has to be prepared to tackle a hybrid war did you ever think about the fact that why does the chief of defense staff say that we have to be prepared to tackle hybrid war whereas our chief of army staff says that we have to be prepared to tackle a two front war why do you think that our chief of air staff and naval staff say that we have to be prepared to tackle a two front war because the army chief air chief they basically talk about the domain to which they are responsible to the army has to protect india from a two front war the air force has to protect india from a two front war but don't forget friends when the chief of defense staff says that india has to prepare to get itself protected from a hybrid war the chief of defense staff is adopting a whole of army approach he is adopting the whole of defense approach he is looking at the threats from an integrated fashion he is looking at the threats from a larger perspective that affect the sovereignty of india so don't forget the fact we have to not only develop today capabilities to tackle the two front war india also has to develop capabilities to tackle hybrid wars hybrid wars are going to be the future wars we have to prepare ourselves brace ourselves to tackle the disinformation campaigns discontent campaigns we have to prepare ourselves to protect from adversary created and adversary launched or adversary engineered protests which are all driven with the attempt of weakening india don't forget lastly that all these strategies adopted by our adversaries to weaken india are driven with the motive to keep india bogged down so that our adversaries at the end of the day have the last laugh while the pakistanis will be happy to become and remain as a rentier state of pakistan of china the chinese on the other hand will be happy to use pakistan to create stumbling blocks for india in india's rise as a global power so do not forget friends that the adversaries waging a hybrid war against us are waging this hybrid war today because these hybrid war strategies allow our adversaries to advance their ambitions at the cost of our ambitions so i hope that in this video i was able to help you to understand not only the china front but very importantly help you to understand the threat of hybrid wars and very importantly help you to understand that how these hybrid wars are going to remain as a threat to us
थैंक यू